I think we'll probably just get started in a couple of minutes. It looks like um, it looks like things are just getting set up. Welcome, everyone. My name is Yves Delamoth Karubi. I'm with the Sustainable Development Solutions Network Secretariat. Very happy to welcome you all to the official launch of our Uganda chapter. Prof. Sabiti was my first contact at Makerere University and, uh, and helped to guide our initial discussions. I'm so glad you're able to join us, Professor. Good afternoon all. Uh, thank you for joining us for this um, launch of the SDSN Uganda National Network. We are still sorting out um, a few things. Just give us five minutes and then we'll be able to start. Thank you. We are happy to be with you at this launch. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and participating in this event. And also thank you very much for being uh, enthusiastic and uh, being partners in the implementation of the sustainable development goals. Um, in this launch meeting, we will learn um, um, more about SDSN, what it is at the global level and at the national level. And so the purpose of this launch event is first of all to introduce to you the national network of SDSN, uh, but also to tell you what our objectives are and what we aim to achieve and our vision of success. And mobilize all of you and your organizations to participate in this network, but also to uh, participate in the implementation and achievement of the sustainable goals, um, contributing to Uganda to achieve these goals, but also uh, globally, but also uh, to really emphasize the role of universities and non-state actors in the implementation of the sustainable development goals. So this network um, was accepted by the global SDSN in November, 2019. And we hoped to, we had hoped to launch it last year to be a physical meeting where we do a lot of interaction and networking but due to the COVID-19 restrictions, uh, pandemic restrictions, this couldn't happen. And we all, um, like you in this uncertainty and hoped that it would end soon so that we have a physical uh, meeting. But now um, we have to accept the new normal and have it online. And um, we will, for the time being, be interacting online and hopefully if um, the situation improves as we go along, then we will be able to uh, meet uh, physically. Uh, without um, taking a, a lot of time, um, we're about 10 minutes into uh, the time of the meeting. Apologies, some um, network issues were not working well and we had to sort them, uh, so apologies. Uh, we are learning, uh, of course, in the process, and we hope to perfection this and do better uh, next time. So uh, with us, uh, we have uh, a number of uh, participants who have joined from the global SDSN. Um, I have uh, I've seen Maria and Eve, who are our managers at the global SDSN joining, we have representatives from the government of Uganda in the office of the prime minister where the sustainable development goals are coordinated from. And we have um, member universities represented civil society um, and more importantly, the youth, the, the, the SDSN uh, youth members and students. 
So we are glad that we have that diversity of participants. And without taking um, more time, um, I would like to invite um, our deputy principal, Professor Gorechi Nawanoga, who is standing in for the principal, uh, Professor Bernard Bashasha, but also for herself because she's quite um, enthusiastic about uh, sustainable development uh, goals. Um, Professor Gorechi Nawanoga is a, a professor of uh, community forestry and uh, is interested uh, in gender issues and uh, SDGs. And um, so, Professor Gorechi Nawanoga, could I uh, welcome you to open this meeting officially? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Levy. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Very well. Okay, thank you very much for your kind words. Um, the president, SDSN, Professor Jeffrey Sarge, the vice chancellor, Makere University, Professor Nawangwe, the representative of the OPM SDGs secretariat, members of the global SDSN and SDSN Uganda, invited guests, the key speakers, sponsors, colleagues from Makere University, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. A very good afternoon to you all, our cherished participants. I bring you greetings from Makere University's College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. Welcome to yet another milestone in the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences as we witness the launch of the Sustainable Development Solutions Uganda National Network, organized by the Global SDSN and SDSN Uganda in collaboration with CAIES and Makere University Center for Climate Change Research and Innovations. In a special way, I will come and equally thank the Global UN SDSN for choosing Makere University to host the SDSN Uganda National Network and for collaborating with the National Network to organize this launch. We don't take this for granted. Distinguished guests, allow me salute the staff of CAIES led by Professor Eli Sabiti and Dr. Lev Twinomhanji who championed the crusade for the university to join the SDS network following the UN call in July, 2017. You too continue to make us proud. Special gratitude goes to the great Mercury University management led by a foresighted leader, none other than Professor Barnabas Nawangwe for the buy-in and support for this in initiative. I am delighted to report that the SDSN Uganda Secretariat is hosted at Makere University Center for Climate Change Research and Innovations, a semi-autonomous unit in the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. MOCRI was launched in 2013 to enhance climate change knowledge generation and dissemination, a challenge we did diligently embraced. The center engages in training, research, and policy interventions. Through MOCRI, Makere University brings together researchers and scientists from within and outside the university, government officials, civil society, and private sector actors to collaboratively and locally address climate change, share information, and solve problems relating to adaptation technologies and research. The college is also using MUCRI as a vehicle to improve and support undergraduate, graduate, diploma, and postgraduate education in climatic sciences, as well as in meteorology, climate change adaptation, and mitigation. The center therefore contributes greatly to the achievement of sustainable development goal number 13 on climate action and greatly speaks 
to the Uganda's National Development Plan 3 and its Development Agenda 2040. I am excited to note that the theme of today's launch event, unlocking the potential of universities and other non-state actors to foster achievement of the sustainable development goals is in line with the global development and climate change agenda agreed upon by world leaders to foster sustainable development and build resilient societies. I am informed that the SDS in Uganda will focus on six thematic areas, agriculture and food security, improved health, natural resources and ecosystems, renewable energy efficiency, sustainable cities, and climate change, not forgetting gender equality and equity as cross-cutting themes. Makere University is well positioned to spearhead this process, given that we have a fully fledged College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, a College of Health Sciences, a College of Engineering and Technology, a School of Economics, a School of Women and Gender Studies, and we are looking forward to partnering with institutions with similar agenda to promote gender responsive achievements of the sustainable gold target under these themes. This will be achieved through training, research, innovations, community engagement, capacity building, and working with government, specifically with the Office of the Prime Minister Secretariat on Sustainable Development Goals. It is my sincere anticipation that through the SDSN Forum, you will explore how to unlock sustainable agro-industrialization to respond to the pressing socioeconomic and development priorities of food security, wealth, job creation, and expansion of the macroeconomic growth through country-owned processes. I therefore call upon you all here present to be the ambassadors of hope and support this sustainable development solution network baby in Uganda to fulfill its noble mandate. On behalf of the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences Management, I do reaffirm that Sustainable Development Solutions Network Uganda will continue to bring together SDSN members in the country to identify, develop, implement, tra trans implement transformative solutions for sustainable development. We shall mobilize universities, research and knowledge centers, civil society, private sector, and special interest groups to promote the achievement of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Distinguished participants, it is now my singular honor and privilege to declare the SDSN launch ceremony officially opened. As we build for the future, for God and my country, I thank you all. Uh, thank you very much, um, thank you very much. Um, Professor Goretti Namanoga, for those very good um, introductory remarks. And um, I'm very much aware that you were part of the discussions that initiated uh, SDSN Uganda. You had uh, uh, when it was still being done by my predecessor, Professor Ed Sabiti and uh, you held meetings with Eve from the Global SDSN. Um, now, it is my pleasure um, to welcome the Vice President uh, of the SDSN uh, in charge of networks, Maria Cortez Push. Uh, I hope I, I pronounced the names quite very well. Um, Maria Cortez is the Vice President of Networks of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network, 
which she joined uh, in 2013. Prior to joining the SDSN, Maria worked for UNESCO at the Science Policy and Sustainable Development Division. Previously, she coordinated the European Energy and Transport Programs at the Polytechnic University in Madrid, Spain, and worked for two years at the Spanish Office for Science and Technology in Brussels, analyzing EU policies for international cooperation, transport, and energy. Maria holds a master's degree in international affairs from Columbia University, uh, the Fulbright Scholar, and the Bachelor of Science and Master's of Science degrees in physics from the Complutense University in Madrid. She lives in Madrid with her family. Uh, welcome, Maria, to SDSN Uganda. We are imagining that you are flown to Uganda. Um, maybe you will do uh, once this uh, pandemic uncertainty uh, is over. But before I welcome uh, you to address the participants, I want to recognize that the vice chancellor, our vice chancellor, Professor Banabas Nawangwe, is uh, already uh, has already joined the meeting, and um, he gladly accepted the uh, the hosting of SDSN by Makerere University. Um, uh, he will be closing our meeting, so we will have. Um, uh, a chance to talk to us. So Maria, please, um, it's now your time to address um, the participants who are eagerly waiting for uh, your wise words. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. Um, SDSN is absolutely honored and thrilled to have Makarere University hosting this very important network. Um, and indeed, we, we all hope that we will be able to, to have an in-person meeting soon enough in Uganda. I think uh, a number of our colleagues, Professor Sachs included, are very, very keen on, on visiting the country as soon as it's uh, possible. Let me thank uh, the Vice Chancellor, as well as the Deputy Principal, um, Dr. Rebo, these have been intense months of work uh, and it's really it, the best case scenario for SDSN to have uh, a university with the prestige and the, the standing of Makerere hosting the network. Um, so I've been asked to speak briefly about SDSN and the networks. What do the networks do? What are some of the key priorities? So I'll take uh, a few minutes uh, on these. Um, SDSN was launched in 2012 um, under the auspices of the Secretary General. This was the time where we didn't yet have sustainable development goals, but they were being designed, they were being discussed. And the Secretary General of the UN at that time thought that this was the biggest challenge of our uh, lifetime. And therefore we needed academia, we needed uh, the brightest minds and the most uh, sophisticated and, and, and knowledgeable institutions to be a part of the debate, um, to help us diagnose the challenge, come up with um, complex solutions uh, and solutions that would incorporate different uh, sectors of society and different uh, groups. And academia and universities specifically were the best place to do this. So since then, SDSN has been mobilizing academia around the world. Uh, we currently have 1,400 uh, member institutions from around the world, of which about 75% of them are universities. And the rest are um, research centers, think tanks, or knowledge producing NGOs. How do, we, how do we organize all of these member institutions? Precisely uh, through our national and regional networks. Our national and regional networks are typically hosted by one or two universities that convene universities from that country in support of the sustainable development goals. We typically say that our networks have um, four priorities. The first priority is to... I'll, 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 
I'll continue. Um, the, the first priority is to localize the SDGs. And with this, we mean uh, think through what does this agenda mean for my specific country or my region? Um, what are some of the challenges that are very unique to us that we will be facing in this agenda? Um, and what, what are some of the opportunities? What are key um, data that we need to gather to understand whether or not we're making the right progress? So the way our networks work is that they work with their governments in defining uh, implementation strategies for the SDGs. They work with national statistical offices, um, with municipalities, and so to understand data questions. And they hopes they hold a host uh, sorry multi stakeholder workshops to discuss and to bring to the table different sectors uh, unions civil society and so to discuss all of these plans and make sure at all times that we're not leaving anyone behind our networks also focused on high quality education on sustainable development. Um, SDSN has a very uh, large SDG academy um, with a number of MOOCs that can be accessed by everyone. Uh, but our networks also do a number of activities, like, for example, summer programs on sustainable development or executive trainings. Uh, with the private sector. They also think through how does the cur curricula need to evolve to make sure that everyone that comes out of a university knows the very basic principles of sustainable development, regardless of if they're going to be a doctor, uh, a lawyer, or, um, or a botanical specialist. Finally, our networks work on what we call the sustainable development goal, uh, sorry, the, the sustainable uh, solution initiatives. Solution initiatives are typically uh, worked with the private sector and sometimes with different levels of government. And they are practical solutions for very specific and very unique uh, uh, problems. Our networks conduct what we call the long-term pathways for sustainable development. So these would be typically very, very technical exercises modeling whether or not the goals are possible uh, to achieve and what, what are the avenues and what are the, the specific trajectories to achieve the, the goals in that country. And while this is a, a technical exercise, our networks always bring, um, once again, civil society, um, sectors of the industry, as well as the government, in a highly iterative process to make sure that um, the model takes into consideration um, the realities of the country, that uh, it, once again, it's not leaving any specific vulnerable group behind, and that is um, and, and that creates consensus in society. Um, this is more or less the, the work program for our networks. Uh, and all of this is done, once again, mobilizing academia, working always with the government and with the private sector. Um, we have 41 networks right now that cover 120 different countries around the world. And one of the great things about our networks is that they have each other. So the SDSN Uganda will be working closely with SDSN Canada and with SDSN Japan and learning from each other and sharing projects and opportunities. Our networks also have direct access to SDSN and to our work. Um, so, for example, in September, we launched a new guide called Accelerating Education for the SDGs in University that was redacted with enormous participation from universities from around the world. And in fact, we currently have an open call for case studies. So if your university is using a very innovative method to teach the SDGs or mainstreaming the SDGs across the university. We want to hear about it. So go to our, our website and please submit your case study. Um, and our networks also get to use our uh, outputs and everything that SDSM produces uh, first handedly. Just to conclude, let me say a couple of words about SDSN Uganda. Um, we've heard from uh, Professor Goretti Navanoga already, all the great work that uh, Makerere is doing and has been doing for the past, uh, well, for, me, for many decades, in fact, in terms of education and research in the areas that we are uh, so worried and so keen to, to, to work on. 
SDSN Uganda was indeed uh, scheduled to launch uh, physically last year. It could not happen, but it doesn't matter because we're doing an online launch. We will meet uh, soon enough in person. And in the meantime, SDSN Uganda has managed to already set up a number of priorities to work in, which sometimes takes a year to a network for a network to decide. It has already established a collaborative relationship with the government of Uganda, specifically with the SDG coordination task force at the prime minister's office. And also it has advised the UN resident coordinator office um, and UNDP on the design of the UN uh, Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework for Uganda for the next four years. So this is, I don't think we can call this network a baby anymore. I think uh, this is uh, already standing up a uh, child and we are really eager to see what comes next. And we stand ready to support the phenomenal work that McEvary and the SDSN Uganda surely will be doing in the next few years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maria, for those um, exciting um, words and um, with a lot of uh, information on the global SDSN network. Uh, I hope now members are trying to understand um, what SDSN Uganda has joined and um, we want to thank you very much for supporting um, SDSN Uganda to be able to operationalize, to be able to be operationalized and putting in, um, in place a secretariat, of course, with the support of the university and the college. I will, um, Maria has um, introduced the international network, the, the global SDSN. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce to you what SDSN Uganda is all about and what it will be um, doing over the next few years. Um, allow me to share my screen. Mine is um, a presentation. So allow me to share a screen. Um, Uh, thank you, Juma, for assisting me to share a screen. Sometimes you think you you know some of these things and then you find that you don't know actually a lot. Uh, can you can you see my screen? Um, good. So um, the presentation is about um, SDSN Uganda or Sustainable Development Solutions Network uh, Uganda. It is an introductory um presentation uh, so basically um uh the Next slide, please. Uh, Maria has already talked about the global SDSN, which is led by Professor Jeffrey Sash, who is uh, who will be talking to us later, and uh, it operates under the auspices of the UN Secretary General since 2012. Uh, it mobilizes scientific and technical expertise from the academia from the civil society, from the private sector. Next. 
Um, so our network was approved by the Network Strategy Council of the UNSDSN in November 2019. We have already talked about it. And um, it appointed Makerere University to host the national network. And uh, this um, appointment was accepted by the vice chancellor. We are glad uh, about this. It is coordinated under the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences. And the secretariat is in the Makerere University Center for Climate Change Research and Innovations, uh, which I coordinate and it was established in 2013 as um, as the deputy principal has already uh, said. So what is our vision? We are looking at mobilizing universities, research and knowledge centers, the civil society, the private sector, and even communities and other special groups, special interest groups, to be able to identify and implement transformative solutions to achieve the 2030 uh, Sustainable Development Agenda and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. So we are conversant that it is not only the role of the state to implement um, the SDGs, but it needs uh, support from other uh, non-state actors that include universities and knowledge centers. Um, our objective um, is to build awareness and knowledge on SDGs. Yes, we know that uh, SDGs are already integrated in our national development agenda but um, quite a number of um, um, actors um, may not be aware about these SDGs. Uh, we also look at conducting research on sustainable development solutions. And the whole issue is that for you to be able to implement um, appropriate solutions, you need evidence base, and this comes from research. And um, our universities are one of the most sustainable institutions that have been on for hundreds of years and Makere University is now 100 years. So it will play a big role. We look at building partnerships and conducting multi-staker dialogues, um, advice, give advice and dialogues on policy and decision-making. But importantly, uh, support youth network. We know that the future of our growth, the future of our countries is in the hands of the youth and the children when we are long gone and we need to set up a platform for them. So basically we are looking at um, the SDGs and the 17 SDGs as you can see them. I think um, uh, next slide. Um, so when we talk about building awareness of the SDGs, how are we going to do it? We look at supporting uh, SDSN in the production and uh, dissemination of reports, both global reports and African reports, index reports, which we have been participating in in the last year. And uh, SDSN, we are glad, has been leading on this but also deliver short-term and professional trainings in the, in the universities, Makere University and other member universities, um, and then uh, support the participation in online education uh, programs, especially the SDG Academy, and of course, um, supporting experimental learning. Uh, I just got this um, extract from the uh, current Africa SDG index report that was produced by SDSN in, with support from other partners. And uh, there it highlights the journey where Uganda has reached uh, all the progress uh, of Uganda in terms of achieving um, uh, SDG targets. And you can see that we are doing very well on climate action. Um, uh, but the other SDGs are uh, SDG 1, 2, uh, 4, uh, 6, 7. Um, we are having some bit of steady progress, uh, but the other SDGs um, we have not yet done quite very well. So uh, this is just to interest you to read this report and see where we are. 
On sustainable solutions, uh, which um, Maria has already talked about, we are looking at multidisciplinary research to generate evidence based for informing uh, the implementation and achievement of SDGs. Um, on partnerships, we are looking at creating a partnership for, build, uh, for dialogues. And already we have this network, which is a platform. It will create uh, thinking spaces for the academia, for the think tanks, for government, for researchers. But we will work very closely with the SDG Secretariat at the Office of the Prime Minister, where we have already um, started collaboration. Um, we support dialogues and provide advice uh, on policy, providing evidence best uh, for government uh, decision makers. Uh, and finally, on this is the empowerment of youth. We, we, we want, we are looking at creating a youth wing. As um, faculty in a university, we are always dealing with the youth. And um, of course, uh, creating uh, the youth empowerment has multiple uh, benefits. Um, it is catalytic because it goes into the future. So we want to really educate the young people about SDGs, um, connect the young people to global networks, and support the young people in developing and scaling innovative solutions. Next. Um, already in Uganda, we have approved SD SN members. Um, the application to become a member of SDSN is done globally, and then once it's approved, and um, then you become a member. And now these members will be uh, the core of SDSN Uganda. So we have Makerere University, which is hosting SDSN. Ndeja University is already a member, and we have had um, uh, interactions um, during the setup of uh, this national network. Uganda Christian University, the National Coffee Research Institute, uh, uh, part of NALO, uh, Mbara University of Science and Technology, the Africa Climate Change Leadership Program, Uganda Technology and Management University, and the School of Hygiene Mbari. So you can see that it is not only a member um, um, membership of universities, but other knowledge centers, civil society, and think tanks. And we have had discussions uh, with the potential members. Um, they are not yet members. They will submit applications in due course. Kawari University, Chabogo University, Vistema University, Makere University Business School, the Economic Policy Research Center, Gakani University, Kampara International University, and Bishop Stewart University. Um, so uh, the vital role of universities really, um, Maria talked about them and I don't need to go um, again through them. Um, So our thematic focus, we have basically six thematic areas that we will be working on, um, and uh, then one that is cross-cutting. Agriculture and food systems in support of SDGs 1 and 2, ending poverty and hunger, improving health, that is SDG 3, natural resources and ecosystem health in support of SDG 6 and 15, renewable energy and energy efficiency, to end the energy poverty, which is SDG 7. Sustainable cities, um, uh, to have resilient and uh, sustainable cities, SDG 11. And uh, also importantly, climate change, climate compatible development. And then we have gender equality and responsiveness uh, being a cross-cutting issue in all the six. Uh, so what has been achieved so far? We already have a fully functional secretariat in place. We have um, a website which is live and functional. We have engaged members. Uh, we have started engaging government. We participate in the coordination um, meetings and the work is in the progress to set up a leadership and governance council. Next steps. Um, we are looking at setting up uh, again the National Leadership Council to have first priorities and activities, continue recruiting members and partners, 
organize solutions conference and above all mobilize our resources to do all this work on the governance and um, organization we know that Makere university is the host the top organ is the leadership council which will be um composed of 10 to 14 eminent persons in uganda and then the secretariat as we said is already at Mukun. Um, so the criteria for creating membership, uh, we look at members who are good at engagement, they provide the substance, um, they have a good reputation, a good experience to contribute resources, but we also look at private sector and other public institutions and other networks. I want to thank you all for listening to me. Um, I would like to take this now opportunity that um, the next on the agenda are the um, keynote addresses. And I would like to hand over to um, Rita Namisango uh, to moderate the next session. Rita Namisango is um, the university, Makere University's senior um, public relations officer. Rita, over to you. Thank you very much, Revo, for the good work. Yes, with respect to time, we have a high level opening panel, which I've been requested to moderate, but I'll not go into the details of introducing the panelists because we have an issue with time. As per our program, we have Dr. Albert Biamgisha, the Senior Technical Advisor, SDGs, Secretariat Office of the Prime Minister, Uganda. That is great because that includes the involvement of government. We also have Sam Mabala, the Country Director, Cities Alliance, Uganda. And for each panelist, we'll have 10 minutes. And after the 10 minutes, I'll request all the participants online to hold it. We'll listen to the keynote address, and thereafter we'll have a question and answer session. So what I'm going to request is that uh, when the panelists are presenting, kindly go to the chat. If you have any issues you would like them to respond to, I'll be capturing what is in the chat. Allow me to welcome Dr. Albert Viamgisha, one of our panelists, the Senior Technical Advisor, SDG Secretariat, Office of the Prime Minister, Uganda. Um, thank you, Rita. Are you hearing me? Hello? Are you hearing me? Yes, we can, yes, hear, you. We can hear you. I can hear you. Yes, I have a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, let me see whether I can find it, but uh, Rev, you can you can show it. Otherwise, as he's looking for it, um, my name is Arbat Biamudisha. I am the senior tech uh, senior technical advisor on sustainable development goals and the head of the SDG Secretariat located at the office of the Prime Minister. I have the pleasure to thank the organizers for inviting the office of the Prime Minister to participate and speak at the launch of the Sustainable Development Solution Network in Uganda. And uh, since the focus of SDSN is in the implementation of Sustainable Development Goals, I'm privileged um, to be part of this launch and will be representing the Office of the Prime Minister and hence the Government of Uganda. Briefly, of course, uh, if you can move fast to the next slide. My presentation, of course, we, uh, will look at, I will give a snapshot of Uganda's journey, then sustainable development uh, coordination framework policy frameworks and development financing, generating evidence 
then you give a snapshot of government programs and then possible areas for possible collaboration. But of course, you have given me 10 minutes and remember the focus of SDSN in Uganda is on SDG. So it's important that from the world you go, we look at Uganda's journey since the inception of SDGs. And I will just present uh, the journey um, looking at three dimensions. The first one starting from down politically, the SDGs were endorsed in 2015 and adopted in 2016. And during that time, Uganda was a front runner because Uganda held the presidency of the General Assembly during that time. And Uganda prepared the first voluntary national report, 2016, which indicated that uh, out of uh, uh, the 169 targets, uh, Uganda, of course, uh, had covered 70 percent, which um, what in, the, uh, we, we, in our national development plan too. Then we have a dedicated minister in charge of SDGs, and recently, last year, Uganda prepared the second international national report. And organizationally, of course, uh, the government has developed a coordination framework, which I will talk about it on how implement uh, SDGs. To operationalize it, we have the roadmap, which was developed in 2018. And we are cooperating with different stakeholders, making sure that no one is left behind. And recently, we signed an MOU with SDG, um, with, um, with CSOs. And of course, in 2016, we developed a framework, which is fully functional at the office of the Prime Minister, with the regard to the, uh, to the Minister of General Duties, who is in charge of SDGs. The SDG Secretary has been established with full support of development partners, especially the UN system supports the coordination function, and all relevant technical working groups are functioning co 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 cohesively to address um, um, different aspects of the SDGs. The framework has been operationalized through the SDG roadmap, uh, which was established in 2018 and aligned with NDP2, now of course with National Development Plan 3. And this is a national coordination arrangement framework, which is used in the implementation of SDGs. The first one is a policy coordination committee, which is chaired by, uh, by the prime minister himself, and the members are minister, cabinet ministers, heads of uh, corporations and agencies. Then down we have implementation steering committee, chaired by the public service, and membership includes all the permanent secretaries, heads of missions, Cooperation and agencies. And down it, we have the National SDG Task Force, which is chaired by the Permanent Secretary of the Prime Minister. And it is attended by chairpersons of the technical working groups, which I'm showing down there. We have five technical working groups. The first one is monitoring and national reporting on the SDGs chaired by Office of the Prime Minister. The second one is planning and administrating technical working groups chaired by National Planning Authority. And the third one is the resource mobilization and financing technical working group chaired by Minister of Finance. And the fourth one is data aspects. Everything to do with data is chaired by uh, Uganda Bureau of Statistics. And the last one is communication and popularization of, of a technical working group of small development goals. So here, uh, SDSN was looking for collaboration with the SDG Secretariat Office of the Prime Minister. And I can, I can uh, tell you right away that you are most welcome and you will be participating in those working groups. So next slide, of course, this one talks about the, the Minister for SDGs, what uh, she's supposed to be doing, and then down the Secretariat, the roles and responsibilities, which are very clear, you can read them, but most importantly, still in the coordination function of SDGs. Now, the national planning frameworks have been accommodative of the 2030 agenda, and the government of Uganda is well positioned to fulfill its ambition to achieve the vision 2040, and has established a, a planning framework, which is robust, delivered through national development plans. We have now a national development plan for five years, whose goal is to increase average household incomes and improve quality of life. And it effectively delivers on the national vision. The national development plan three in part emphasizes the need to identify and utilize the new and integrated innovative financing options 
in the public and private sector to help identify development opportunities, which uh, Rev was talking about, advancing mechanisms for fully aligning the plan, budget, and LPC results, and reporting frameworks, and then strengthening public investment management. Next. Um, the government of Uganda has demonstrated a commitment to align financing to development situations. One, uh, government issues certificate of compliance, gauging the level of alignment of the budget to national development plans. And uh, of course, so far, there have been an improvement uh, from 54%, 60%, from 2017, uh, stroke 18, 2018, 19. Government has issued a gender and equity compliance certificate to mainstream as a precondition for budget appropriation. The third one is the government has commenced the implementation of the program based budgeting and then has a comprehensive public financing management reform strategy from 2018 to 2023, which was developed. And of course, this one will enhance resource mobilization and improving planning and public investment management. There are efforts in the partnerships with the UN uh, system to develop and implement an integrated uh, financing framework for strengthening a complementary, independent, and uh, mutually. Achieved. Now, government continues to build evidence to guide the planning. And under this one here, uh, we, we support from UNDP, we undertook an assessment of the policy and institutional gaps in SDG implementation. We also undertook analytical work on specific SDGs for zero hunger, SDG 2, and then peace. Uh, justice and uh, for SDG 16 to inform planning and the strategic review of SDG 2. The, we have developed an integrated um, SDG model for Uganda. Through the model, of course, we have three categories of interventions as SDG accelerators. And these ones uh, include environment, governance, and industry. And I'm happy to note that, of, of course, in SDSN, you are focusing also on the environment, climate change. So we already have it as one of the key accelerators. Next. So government together with development partners and stakeholders have initiated actions and strategies of engagement and implementation such as integrating SDGs into all our national development and statistical indicator framework, integration of SDGs into the national MLE strategy, formed a youth coalition for SDGs initiative, for youth engagement, we at the Secretariat, we have a section uh, for the youth, and we have formed a youth coalition where we expect to have one million youth for one million solutions. So already, since you are also engaging with the youth, we already have a coalition for that. Then there is a localization of SDGs in two district and local government plans, and conducting voluntary local reviews in local governments, which we have started working towards the better engagement of the private sector, so establishment of private sector platform. Uh, on 1st May, uh, the Prime Minister will be launching the private sector platform, and uh, the Macquarie University will be invited. Then we have also popularization of SDGs through media campaigns and production of uh, IEC materials. Tracking SDGs through Uganda as a voluntary national report, which we did last year, um, yeah, Uganda participated at the, at the high level political forum in July last year, and this is a minister now delivering um, Uganda's uh, report to the UN Assembly, uh, UN high level political forum. And overall, on SDG progress, according to development solutions network, Uganda is more than 50% of the way uh, towards achieving SDGs by 2030, as indicated by the Solutions Network. In the 52 African countries, Uganda ranked uh, 18th position with overall score of 54.8, and with Africa on 52.7. And based on our voluntary national report of last year, Uganda has made good progress on all the SDGs with several policies and strategies facilitated the SDG implementation. And the key of them, which I want to share with you are one, social protection programs for women, youth, and elderly. Uh, the other one is job creation and youth empowerment. Then the uh, establishment of UPE and uh, universal primary education and universal second education. The other one is gender equality and women empowerment. And another achievement is the refugee policy. Uganda, I think, is the only African country with the highest number of refugees, more than 1.4 million. 
Then we have special programs like Northern Uganda Support Fund, and then a development initiative for Northern Uganda. We have the Rwenzori Economic Empowerment Programs. We have Saving Mother Giving Life Initiatives, and then rural education programs, uh, climate action interventions. Uh, however, Uganda needed, of course, to fast track her efforts as indicated uh, in the dashboard uh, for SDGs 1, 2, 4, 6, 7. And the key recommendation is, of course, of the VNR report uh, produced last year that we are going to focus on in the next decade. In the next nine years, include stronger partnerships, coordination, and collaboration. And we can see this one as one of the ways of coordinating and collaborating with uh, stakeholders. So already, uh, you are welcome. The second one is deeper localization and popularization of the SDGs. Dr. And the Dr. Yes. Albert, please, yes, uh, please. Four, four minutes. Okay. Four minutes and, and to, uh, just hold it and to all the participants, kindly ensure that you, if you have questions for Dr. Albert, please type the questions via chat. Thank you. So that one will, will exclude the time you have occupied. I was about to finish. <laughs> so we have six recommendations that have been indicated there, promoting SD focus innovations, focusing on SDGs, and then strengthening data monitoring and reporting. Next. Possible areas of partnerships, of course, SDG research to build a knowledge base for the Secretariat Hub. Uh, government has developed a Secretariat Hub which is now going to be a convergence center for SDGs. And this is where now the uh, SDNS definitely will be operating from, since now we are forming partnership and creating awareness on SDGs through policy dialogues, of course, where we shall be having think tank discussion, that is very important. Then working together with, uh, with you in the identification and promotion of practical solutions. And of course, contributing to uh, SDG publications and also receiving publications from the SDG. And of course, uh, I talked about leaving no one behind where we signed the MOU with the civil society organizations. Thank you very much for listening to me. Wow. <laughs> I like, thank you very much. And uh, on behalf of the, all the participants, I'm glad that you ended with the Tonde Kamarega drive. That's nice, leaving no one behind. But I've also picked the idea of um, the youth collision, <coughs> one million youth. And at Makere University and all other universities, we have youth. So we'll be able to follow that up. Now to all the participants, you've listened to. Thank you very much. To all the participants, you've listened to Dr. Albert Biamgisha, and I'm requesting that uh, please go to ch the chat room and ask some questions. We'll follow that later. Now I have a slight, because we, are, we have an issue with time, a slight adjustment in the program. I humbly request uh, one of our panelists, that is uh, Mr. Sam Mabala, that was our next panelist and he's already online. He's been participating. I've seen him among the participants to bear with me so that the keynote, the keynote speaker, Professor Jeffrey Sash, speaks and thereafter we'll go back to Samuel Mabala and listen to him. It's because the keynote speaker in terms of time has another engagement. So I humbly request uh, mm -hmm. our panelists to remain participating and all the participants make please ensure that you go to the chat and ask some questions that you'd like the panelists to respond to and allow me to adjust the program and uh, ensure that we listen to the keynote speaker. And uh, as per our program, the keynote speaker is Professor Jeffrey Sash, who is already online. Our keynote speaker is a university professor and director of the Center for Sustainable Development at Columbia University. He's president of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network and a commissioner of the UN Broadband Commission for Development. 
Sash has been advisor to three United Nations Secretaries General, and currently Professor Jeffrey serves as an SDG advocate and a Secretary General Antonio Stress. Sash was twice named among the Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential World Leaders. So we are honored that we are going to listen to a person, a personality, an individual, a professor who was twice named among the Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential World Leaders and was ranked by The Economist among the top three most influential living economists. And uh, allow me to invite Professor Jeffrey. And Professor Jeffrey, I know that you've been participating and following and you've seen the participants, but just to also inform you that the Vice Chancellor of Makere University, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe is online and participating. You're welcome, thank you. Thank you so much to, make, to speak to us. Th thank you so much for the uh, lovely introduction and thanks to Makarara University and Vice Chancellor for your leadership uh, and for hosting the SDSN Uganda. And thanks to the senior government officials for their presentations and their emphasis on how the sustainable development goals are being integrated into Uganda's planning process and its vision process. Uh, it remains for me to emphasize how we would like to work with you and to help you in the challenges ahead to accelerate progress to achieving the sustainable development goals. I think the path ahead for Uganda is a very challenging one uh, because Uganda faces many, many development challenges and opportunities. And we would like to brainstorm with you and strategize with you, both in the government and in the academic sector and in the business community to find ways to accelerate the progress. I think the SDGs are most useful as a reference point to understand where the big gaps in development occur and therefore where the big uh, mobilization of energy and resources and creativity and strategy should lie. And when we look at the situation in Uganda, we clearly see some very important priorities that I would like us to address. For me, perhaps the number one priority is SDG number four, which is universal access to quality education. I mention this because I believe that education is the single every person had access to quality internet, then we could expand online education. We could expand telemedicine. We could expand government services. We could expand technical training. We could expand e-payment services. We could expand environmental management and environmental supervision we could expand the data systems tremendously. So I believe that in addition to universal education, we should be aiming very rapidly for universal access to digital services, including broadband, wireless, uh, and the ap appliances or the tools that are needed to use these services. I know that in both of these cases, there are significant financial constraints and we need to think how development financing can help the government of Uganda to mobilize the resources and how the private sector 
and how the international tech companies and the telecoms companies can help to mobilize the investments needed to achieve these two goals. If we could achieve universal digital access, I think it would be much easier to achieve SDG number three, which is universal healthcare coverage, because there is now plenty of experience of using telemedicine as a powerful way to expand access to healthcare. Now it's possible to diagnose patients from a distance, to read x-rays from a distance, to monitor symptoms from a distance, and so forth. And I believe that if we use the digital platform, we could tremendously expand the access to medicine and healthcare as well. Of course, this raises yet another challenge because they're interconnected. And that's the challenge of mass electrification because we need electricity in the villages and in the cities in order to power a digital network and the digital appliances. And still far too few households and villages have modern electricity services. And this raises the question of renewable energy in Uganda. There is, of course, a tremendous potential for solar power as a major uh, instrument for mass electrification on microgrids, mini grids, and even uh, grid scale at the national level through solar power. And this is an area I believe also where financing can make a huge difference. Households can pay for energy services, but not the upfront investment costs of solar panels and wiring and systems, but they can pay over time, small amounts per month to cover the costs of electricity services. And we have uh, developed such microgrids uh, actually in Uganda, in Ruhira uh, and uh, other parts of Uganda, precisely to show that it's possible to have the commercial enterprises using the microgrid approach. This, I think, should be tremendously expanded. I want to raise a question also about the energy strategy in Uganda, because I know that there are major plans just announced, in fact, for the development of the oil sector. I must say I am rather doubtful about this, uh, because it seems to me that it is running against the global trend, which is to end the use of oil, coal, and natural gas, not to expand the use of oil, coal, and natural gas. I know that there are high hopes for developing Uganda as an oil exporting country, but I'm a little bit skeptical, I have to say, uh, with friends, because uh, the expenses will be very high the petroleum is, as you know, very waxy and expensive to transmit. The pipeline goes through many ecologically sensitive regions and through villages. The dangers of oil spills are very high. And I don't think the returns are going to be very good if we look ahead for 20 years. So I, I raise this because I believe in renewable energy and distributed solar power much more than I believe in big oil and gas pipelines, especially because the world is moving to electric vehicles and to decarbonization of energy. So this project seems to me to run against the direction of the global marketplace. And I worry that it will become a stranded asset in the future, not really a development opportunity. So I hope that this is something that also can be 
analyzed and studied because I think it is important. And it's important for another reason as well. Uganda is an absolutely beautiful country and with wonderful ecosystems and wonderful biodiversity. And uh, of course, we treasure uh, the beauty of Uganda and uh, Lake Victoria and uh, all of the remarkable ecosystems of the country and of the great uh, biodiversity, which is a great resource for the country and also a great resource for tourism. But it needs to be taken, of course, with very good care. And it's under a lot of pressure. All of the ecosystems of Uganda are under a lot of pressure. And this is a major focus of SDGs 14 and 15, the stewardship and protection of the ecosystems. Uganda's population has been growing very, very rapidly, as you know. Uh, there are now about 45 million people in Uganda. In 1950, only 5 million. So increase of almost 10 times. And the population continues to grow rapidly. And the pressures on the ecosystems continue to be very great. And big projects like the oil pipeline are also threats to the ecosystem. But Uganda depends on the health and conservation of its remarkable beauty and ecosystems and its endangered species. So I would hope that the SDGs also would be an important opportunity to redouble the protection and support of Uganda's ecosystems and to focus on the kinds of projects that preserve the beauty of your country, which is really remarkable, uh, and that avoid the ecological harms and the ecological dangers. We also know that demographically there will be a shift from the rural areas increasingly to the urban areas. And this poses more challenges because the urban eco, uh, infrastructure, uh, the water, the sanitation, uh, the uh, transport grid, the power system, the healthcare, uh, the sanitation, the uh, uh, education are all major costs uh, and uh, major challenges of urbanization. So the urban transformation, which is embodied in SDG 11 are also a huge, huge challenge. Well, a big problem with everything that I'm saying is that I'm talking about a lot of investments, whether in education or in healthcare or in digital uh, or in energy, and those cost money and uh, money beyond what is available in the national budget. I'm very much aware of that. But I believe that we should hold strong to the goals and that your friends and partners at the UN and in the international agencies and the African Development Bank and UNECA and others should be working together with you to identify how to close the financial gap in other words, rather than saying we'll do without electricity or we'll do without schools, I hope Uganda says, no, no, we must have the schools, we must have the electrification, we must close the financing gap. And it is your job as our partners to help us to do so. And I think that this is the spirit <coughs> of the sustainable development goals and one of the most important purposes of the Sustainable Development Goals, and that is to mobilize the international partnership to get this done. So let me conclude here by saying that we're very excited with the launch of SDSN Uganda. Uh, I'm very gratified that Makerere University has 
taken on this great role and challenge. It's a great university. And we want to work with you to help solve these problems. And I hope we can solve them <clears throat> with the speed and urgency that they deserve. Because I would like to think that every child in Uganda will have the future that they deserve and that they need and that they want. Uh, and that means helping them to be empowered, to be in school, to get the skills they need and the jobs uh, afterwards that are going to be good for their livelihood. So it's a very, very big challenge, but it's one that we are eager to help you in finding the way forward. Let me thank you for the chance to share these brief remarks with you today and to participate in the launch of SDSN Uganda. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Professor Jeffrey. Do you hear me? I do. Yes, thank you. Um, I've really listened to the insights and uh, I'm happy that you've emphasized SDG number four, universal access to quality education for all Ugandans. Um, SDG number three, universal access to health care. We need to be alive. We need to be safe. The general well-being of all of us. But there is also a point on mass electrification that you would wish to see in Uganda and protection of the ecosystem. Yes, protection of the ecosystem, given our rapid population growth in Uganda. But I'm glad that in the interest of time, you've called all of us because you've helped us identify those gaps and you're calling upon Uganda to work with the UN, the government, private sector, universities, the academia, the media to close the financial gaps. That is very essential. Allow me, because I, I requested the participants to follow us through the chat but I do not see any comments. Maybe because your, <laughs> your lecture or your address seemed to touch the very core that we are thinking about. But since the Vice Chancellor of Makere University is online, Professor Banabas Nawangwe, would you have something before Professor Jeffrey leaves us? You've listened to Professor Barnabas Nangwe, you've listened to his keynote address. Would you say something, just maybe a comment to Professor Jeffrey before he leaves? Then I'll also still go to the chat and look at what the other participants are saying. Uh, well, thank you, Rita. I want to <coughs> most sincerely thank Professor Jeffrey Sachs for participating in this discussion, which is extremely important uh, for our country. I want, I, I must say that uh, he's one of the international people that I admire, who is concerned wow. about the well-being of our planet. That's and great. Also the well -being of, and also the well-being of the people living in the underdeveloped world. I have uh, participated in uh, several meetings where uh, Professor Sachs has uh, addressed these issues. But I must say, Professor Sachs, I, I remember very well when you were addressing us in the UN president, uh, I mean, uh, University Presidents Forum, and you were concerned very much about what was happening in the United States, and you were praying that. Uh, President Trump should not be re-elected, otherwise it will be a disaster for the whole world. <laughs> we <laughs> yes, had some good news. We way. had some good news this year. <laughs> yes, yes, but uh, I, I am really impressed that you have such knowledge of Uganda uh, that you know even the latest events that are happening in Uganda. You seem to have Uganda at your fingertips, and for us, we must say we are privileged to have you as the person that is heading this uh, network 
and that uh, we will take every advantage of your knowledge of Uganda to work with you. And uh, as you have said, the universities must be at the center of this. And so as Makere University, we are really privileged and we are proud that we associated with you. And we'll take every advantage to extract all the knowledge you already know about Uganda for the improvement of the situation in this country. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Vice Chancellor. It will be my great honor, uh, really. Uh, so I, I count on you to call on me uh, and uh, we can have uh, more uh, conferences, brainstorming uh, discussions. Uh, I think uh, your great university has a huge role to play and I'm excited to help you in any way. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. And uh, Professor Jeffrey, there is from the chat, the students' body and uh, the students' hubs have come up with proposals for implementation, but find challenges implementing them because of meager or no funding in many instances. The students have proposals, but they have challenges implementing them. And there is a request kindly enlighten students on any avenues to access finances to implement such proposals. At the moment, we the students are partnering with government, private sector, civil society in our localities on any activities under SDGs. That is coming from the chat. One of the students wishes you to give them some enlightenment on any avenues to access finances to implement such proposals under SDGs. Wonderful. Well, let me thank the students very much. And to say also that we have a, an SDSN youth uh, global organization. And I would like the students to be part of that. And that within that SDSN youth, uh, we will work with you on the funding issues, especially for student-led activities uh, to see what can be done and how we could mobilize resources. For, the, for Uganda at the national level, there is a big challenge that is not uh, easy to solve about the resources because Uganda needs a lot of investments in digital, in energy, in education. These can't wait. These can't wait till Uganda has enough budget income to satisfy all of that. They have to come in upfront because these are investments that are essential for Uganda's development. And Therefore, I believe that it is very important for the national investments to be very clearly identified. What is needed? What is the strategy? Then to identify the financing gap and then to work with institutions, especially the UN, the UN SDSN, and institutions like the African Development Bank, and also the private sector to say, these are the investments that are a high priority. How can we get these done? Whether it is a business investment or an official financing by the African Development Bank or some other combination. But we have to study that and then find practical solutions. Uh, this is very, very important. What we can't do is say that these have to wait. Unfortunately, that's been how the system has worked in the past. It says, well, it would be nice if everybody had school, but there's not enough money for that. We have to put the priority in the opposite way. And that is to say, every child will have school. Now, how are we going to pay for that? Uh, and whether it's uh, canceling debts uh, or new grants uh, or a special 40-year zero interest loan or some other strategy, which I can't tell you automatically, but I want to analyze, this is how we have to do things. You know, the world is very unfair as I don't have to tell people. Uh, there is so much wealth, but not 
much is given to help poor children who need schooling. And we have to mobilize that wealth and we have to make the case very clearly. There was a, a, a magazine uh, in the United States, Forbes magazine, which just published an edition last week of the rich, about the richest people in the world. There are 2,700 billionaires in the world now, 2,700. And they have $13 trillion of wealth. You know, those 2,000 people could ensure not only that every child in Uganda is in school, but every child in the whole world is in school. That's how rich they are. And so we need to make the case urgently whether to tax those people with a wealth tax or whether they give a billion dollars of their money, which they would not even mind because they have so many billions uh, in order to get this done. But we need to campaign for this. And so the young people are very important. The SDSN youth can help. And with the government, it's very important to be ambitious in development, not patient, ambitious. And then to say to the UN, to say to uh, the uh, African Development Bank, to say to the US government, to say to the Chinese government, to say to the European Union, this is what the SDGs are, that we have global cooperation to ensure that every child is in school and the other things that I've talked about. So that's what I would like us to, to work on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, professor, this is a, com a comment Pade from Bara University, Bara University of Science and Technology in Uganda. He says, I agree with the strategy of, he agrees with the strategy of education, internet and healthcare, but he has concerns, especially in healthcare, of remotely treating people. People are, I think that what it means is that there are no X-rays, X-rays yeah. to handle health, to provide proper health care to humans. So in terms, yes, but we have problems with, I think the right equipment, the right technology, because I think you talked about telemedicine. So that is what he's referring to. We are having an issue with uh, telemedicine, but also he emphasizes the, the need for quality and revamping of the curriculum from being knowledge-based, but creative-based. I think there he was in agreement. Then still in chat from Penina, Penina thanks you for the keynote. And she says here at Environmental Lat. They are developing agro-business incubation center on agroecology system, not only to protect nature, but to skill graduates, graduates to fit in the job market. But she was wondering how they could be supported. She was wondering Wonderful. how they, they could be supported. Yeah. They, so they are coming up with an agro-business incubation center. Yeah. This is, uh, these are fantastic initiatives. And I think one of the uh, opportunities of SDSN Uganda would be to host each year one or more uh, gatherings. It could be also online uh, to review proposals and ideas that are coming and to identify priorities or to brainstorm on options on how uh, the financing or the organization can be done, whether it's public sector, private sector, and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't know on the specific idea, but the general approach is exactly correct. And let me emphasize on healthcare and on education. Digital technology is not the solution all by itself, of course, but it can be an important addition. Uh, and that is what I'm suggesting. I, I very much believe in community health workers, for example, working in the villages. I would like them to be empowered with a tablet or a smartphone so that they can connect to a telemedicine center. And also when there's no doctor, but only a community health worker 
to be able to give emergency advice, for example. So I believe that the digital makes all of our systems work better and can really enhance health and education and financing and banking and access to energy and many other things. The problem, of course, is that most households in Uganda don't have access to digital right now because they can't afford it. Uh, they're not connected. They don't have an appliance. Uh, they don't have a smartphone or a tablet uh, and so on. So I'm involved in many discussions about universal access to digital services. UN Secretary General Guterres has called for a roadmap to universal digital access. I know of countries that are scaling up digital access quickly, and maybe there are some good lessons there as well. I apologize because it's easy to say we should have universal this, universal that, but when the resources are so little, uh, it's very hard to achieve. But this is where the breakthroughs need to come. And there's enough finance available, but it's hard to mobilize. We have to identify it. We have to press for it. We have to break through the complacency, which says, oh, don't hurry don't worry so much. And to say, yes, worry, let us get these investments really accomplished. That is the mindset that I think is very important. And I will mention in the United States, for example, if you can imagine, we have uh, spent, because it's a very rich country, we've spent $6 trillion, $6 trillion, $6,000 billion, six million million dollars uh, for just fighting COVID in the last 12 months. That's how rich the U.S. is, but the U.S. should be helping other countries too uh, to do the same. And so this is why the SDGs, in my mind, are an important tool for us to identify the priorities, to identify the financing gaps, and to mobilize the resources. Thank you very much. In um, the interest of time, I'd kindly request only the, the two panelists. That was Dr. Albert Biamgisha, the Senior Technical Advisor SDGs, if he could have any comment regarding the keynote and also Mr. Sam Mabala, the Country Director, Cities Alliance, Uganda, if you'd also have any comment or something to say about the keynote before Professor Jeffrey leaves. Dr. Uh, Albert Yamgisha. Yamgisha, I have liked the keynote address uh, by Jeffrey. It was very exciting and it's right, of course, even in my presentation, I indicated that we're not doing very well on SDG uh, 4, which is education. And of course, since it is cost-cutting, it is government's priority. So we must make sure that in whatever we do, we handle that uh, with great care. And we are happy, Jeffrey, that uh, as a SDG secretariat, we shall work together and benefit from his knowledge. It will Thank be my you. great my great pleasure, Dr. Albert, to work with you. So I'm Thank looking you. forward to that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. Uh, next, let's have uh, Mr. S Sam Mabala, Country Director, Cities Alliance, Uganda. Sam? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Caroline. I would also Great. like to add my voice to the previous speakers to appreciate and commend uh, Professor for the articulate presentation made. Uh, my comment is that Uganda seems to be at crossroads. It is urbanizing very rapidly and it needs, um, it needs to, to leapfrog and catch up on the, on the years lost. Yet the challenge is facing in terms of the energy demand and I think that's the reason why uh, it is lay, it is putting all its hopes in the fossil fuel. 
uh, the electricity coverage in the country is still very low. The urbanization rate is very high, and yet it is also prioritizing industrialization at the same time. So I think it is the it is now incumbent upon uh, it's a challenge to national government to strike a balance between uh, the green technologies and environmentally friendly kind of uh, strategies and the kind of demands that it is facing in order to 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 stimulate economic growth to meet I mean and create employment for the for the high population of the young people close to 70 percent of Ugandans are youths, they need jobs. And I think this is the, this is the kind of dilemma in which the, 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 the government finds itself. So I think there is a need for striking a balance uh, in order to, to achieve uh, the, the current needs while at the same time is uh, trying to respect the environmental uh, sustainability and the, the, and the SDGs. Thank you very much, Professor. Some, some well, thank you. And I'm, I'm sure that you're right. Uh, you know this, I, I don't know all the details of the oil project, obviously. And I know that there are big hopes for it. And one of the hopes is that it will create a lot of jobs, building the pipeline and uh, all the construction. Many billions of dollars would be invested. I do believe if the investment were billions of dollars in solar energy, <laughs> there would be more jobs and they would last longer uh, and they would be better for Uganda and better for the people. Uh, that's my belief. Of course, I stand to be better informed and better corrected, but I do feel something strange about this project, even though I can understand why the government would like it, because as you say, it it would create a lot of employment. Something doesn't feel right to me about it because in other parts of the world, pipelines are being canceled and projects are being stopped because we're all shifting to electric vehicles. So the use of petrol is going down sharply. And we had several pipelines in the United States canceled in the past year and the Canadian pipelines canceled in the past year. And so it worries me. Uh, that's why I, I raise it. It doesn't really make sense to me. But of course, maybe there's an explanation that I don't understand. But I agree with you why the government is prioritizing this. I do believe, though, that you could put vast numbers of young people to work building microgrids, mini grids things that would surely last for the future. And that is what I would like to uh, try to find out more about. Um, thank you so much, our keynote speaker. And uh, from all the participants and what is on chat, we are very grateful that you've accorded us time. And we also thank you for all the words of wisdom, especially your emphasis on the need to allocate resources to ensure that we achieve the SDGs. Thank you very much. We'll see you all soon and congratulations. Okay, please, bye-bye. And uh, to all the participants that has been very lively and very informative and they are very wonderful strategies that came out from the keynote address. Now, I would like to request Samuel Mabala, who is already here, to use just 10 minutes. Samuel? Hello? Samuel? Hello. Yes, please. Yes, do you hear? Yes, Samuel is one of our panelists. Samuel, you have only 10 minutes. Just kindly speak to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, moderator. Um, I don't know whether we can be able to, to share this slide. I, I made some few uh, slides which I thought I could, uh, I could share to guide uh, my submission. Please do so. Revo, can you, <coughs> Revo, can you share the, 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 the slide presentation, please? Thank <laughs> you. 
As the presentation is, is, is coming on, I would like to introduce uh, the organization that I work for. I work for Cities Alliance uh, in Uganda. It is a global partnership which was set up to address uh, urban poverty and support cities to deliver sustainable development. And it's basically, it is, a, it is managing a trust fund, support cities and national governments to address the challenge of urbanization and enable them to, to realize cities without slums. Um, so Cities Alliance is uh, based in Brussels, but it is currently having national governments. Now, the first slide that I'm, I mean, it's based also at country, country program level. Uh, the first slide shows the SDGs, all the 17. <clears throat> and my comment on this is that all these SDGs are relevant to cities, although only one of them is dedicated to cities, and that is the SDG 11. Uh, we can move to the next slide, please. I'd also like to observe that uh, in the global context, cities are occupying only 2% of the total land area. However, they contribute 70% to the GDP and they consume 60% of the global energy, could be even more. They generate more than 70% to greenhouse gas emissions and also generate close to 70% of the global waste. So therefore, the cities are where the battle for sustainable development will be won or lost. And therefore, it has become more and more clear that achievements on sustainable development will depend on how well we manage and guide the urbanization process. Currently and globally, uh, cities especially in, uh, of course, more than half of the population are already in cities. So we are talking about an urbanized world already. So Cities Alliance was set up to try to address the issue of the urban poor. More than 60% of the population, especially urban population in, a, in the developing countries are actually uh, following the category of the urban poor. And most of them live within slums and informal settlements. So Cities Alliance has a vision that it seeks to improve the lives of 60 million urban poor across 200 cities in 20 countries by 2030. Mm -hmm. and, and it is doing this through leveraging the collective expertise, resources, partnerships to catalyze the urban transformation at both global level and the national level. I said it is a global partnership which belongs to 29 members and all these some are governments, multilateral agencies, NGOs, private foundations, universities, uh, including uh, the academia. It has, it is, it is collaboration areas are four. In other words, it works through partnerships and supports programs at the global level. We have the global, global programs, we have the country level programs, and we have innovation programs. At country level, the, I mean, at country level, we are focusing more on capacity development. We realize that most of the cities have capacity gaps. Many of them in terms of staff establishments have less than 60% of the kind of staffing that is required. When you compare one city, say in Uganda, and another city in UK, which, is, which has the same population, you realize that while in Uganda, you only have maybe six planners, like in the case of the, of the city, the same kind of city elsewhere has more than 60 to 100 planners. So there are capacity issues that need to be addressed. The national urban policies have not been, uh, have not been put in place. 
In fact, Cities Alliance identified the policy vacuum in Uganda, and that's one of the areas that it supported to develop, to support the government to put in place the national urban policy. The issue of infrastructure development, it leveraged resources to support the government to improve on infrastructure within the municipalities. It supported the formulation of the city development strategies. These are long-term kind of strategic plans to guide the organization. It also mobilizes and empowers for inclusive participation within the city planning and budget. At a global level, we have the development of the knowledge products. It supports research in various areas, advocacy and policy issues on emerging topical issues. And also it uses its convening powers to catalyze and bring together various uh, stakeholders to discuss issues uh, uh, regarding the urbanization. The innovation program aims at incubating fresh thinking and approaches that can address urban challenges, uh, particularly in the rapidly urbanizing cities. So those are the areas that it operates in. Now, Cities Alliance, how does it contribute to the SDGs? As part of the United Nations system, Cities Alliance is hosted by the United Nations Office for Project Services. And therefore, it strongly advocates for the SDGs. And it works towards, it is work contributes towards staying out of the 17 SDGs. The first one, zero one, I mean, the first one is ending poverty, extreme poverty in all its forms. As you may realize, colleagues, the challenge of slums and informal settlement is just a symptom of urban poverty. And that's why Cities Alliance has made this as, a, as, as an area, priority area for support to try to improve and conditions within the slums. So it provides uh, community upgrading funds as grants for infrastructure development, provides community development fund as seed capital to leverage community savings for investment in, in business development. 86% of the targets in SDG1, all of them are relevant to what Cities Alliance does. SDG number five about gender equality. In all its programs, gender has been ma mainstreamed in all its programs. So it does not do anything without ensuring that gender concerns are addressed. Now, SDG six, seven, eight, nine, all those are within the urban development and slum upgrading programs, enhancing access to better sanitation, to clean energy, to decent work, to infrastructure. All those are what forms part of the programs, part of the support that Cities Alliance provides to cities. Can we go to the next slide? It continues again, number 10, reducing inequalities. Because we realize that if we can address the issue of poor, of the urban poor, and improve on their, uh, on their conditions, then we should be able to reduce the inequalities that are inherent within the cities. SDG 11 is the one which focuses so much on the cities. And I'm glad to say, that this is the SDG, which, which is one of the, I think one of the, one of the themes that is going to be addressed by SDSN. And uh, we are very glad to, to be part of the network and we shall actually participate uh, within, that, within that, that theme. So we can see that uh, all the targets, as I say, target one, two, three, four, five, six, even going to uh, seven, 11 A and B, all of those are related to what Cities Alliance does. We can move to the next slide, please. Yeah, so those are the kind of targets which uh, are, are related to SDG 11. I just gave a highlight of the targets, uh, each of which is trying to address uh, a specific theme related to, and that is, these, these are all incorporated within the implementation uh, plans 
that the Cities Alliance supports. The next one. Okay, again, those, those are targets. You know, by 2030, we expect universal access to inclusive green spaces within the cities. All these are components that are incorporated within the programs. And finally, Cities Alliance portfolio in Uganda. Cities Alliance, as an, as an organization, which is currently having the, the country office in Uganda, uh, has been supporting at national level the urban policy already. I think uh, we identified the need for the legal framework to operationalize that policy. The issue of infrastructure development is something which we have been, uh, we've been involved in to leverage the resources to support cities to improve on their infrastructure. City development strategies, we believe that a city must have a vision and the vision is a long term, which must every city should aspire to achieve. The issue of slum upgrading initiatives, we believe that slum upgrading should be citywide, gradual, but then it should be incremental. And then under cities of migration, we are addressing the challenges of voluntary migrants, those are the labor migrants, there are many people who are migrating to the cities in search of employment, and then they are the ones who increase the numbers of the unemployed who end up living in slums and informal settlements. And then also the issue of involuntary migrants. We have refugees and urban refugees who have come in. They are putting a lot of pressure on city services, and yet the cities don't have the capacity to respond. So that is something which we are also supporting. The issue of urban expansion planning, we realize that we have always been uh, chasing after developments, that planning comes actually when developments have taken place. So Cities Alliance has now come up with a methodology to look 30 years from now and support cities to anticipate development and plan accordingly how the cities can expand in an, in an orderly manner over the period of 30 years. So I'm very glad that uh, Cities Alliance is uh, going to value the partnership and alliance uh, with in the SDSN and realize the common shared vision of sustainable development. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Back to Caroline. Thank you very much, Samuel. From the chat, we only have one question. There is a participant who is asking in the context of SDG, what is the operational definition of cities? Do they include the towns, municipalities, urban areas? Kindly just respond to that very briefly so that we go to the next session. Yeah, of course, what happens is that uh, when we talk about cities, each of the countries may have a specific country specific definition of what a city is. You may have the hierarchy of, you know, right from the town boards, town councils, issues of uh, municipalities, uh, then the cities, metropolis, metropolis and so forth. But uh, with regard to, in the context of, of the presentation, each of these, before it becomes a metropolis, it must have been a city. Before it becomes a city, it must have been a municipality. Before it was a municipality, it was a town council. So it all depends that you may see the beginnings of a trading center. Like in the 1970s, most of the municipalities which we have today were trading centers, but they were declared cities last July. So we need, much as we may be emphasizing the issue of cities, but we, it is applicable to all the other hierarchies of the urban areas, whether at metropolitan level or at, at regional level, or sub-regional or district level, all urban areas have specific uh, kind of, uh, they, 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 they have common, they have commonalities, which must therefore be addressed too. So like when the cities are centers that provide opportunities, and that's why people migrate to cities with the hope that they are going to access better livelihood. So whether it is, a, it is a, at a town council level, 
but it is experience of migration. The only challenge, therefore, is that when it is a large city, the magnitude of the challenge is much bigger. But we must therefore need, we need to plan early enough in order to realize uh, the kind of sustainable cities that uh, SDGs are referring to. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Samuel. Uh, may I now invite uh, Dr. Revoka Tastrino Muhanji, the National Network Manager, to take us through the next phase. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rita, uh, for moderating the, the session and also uh, the key speakers, Professor Jeff, um, Sam, and Dr. Arbat Biamujisha for those um, thrilling uh, presentations and uh, which are quite informative. Uh, now, um, I request that we again uh, adjust the program uh, a bit to allow the Vice Chancellor, Professor Banabas Nawangwe, to speak. And um, Professor Banabas Nawangwe is uh, a professor of architecture. He has um, been working at Makerere uh, University for over 30 years, rising from the lowest to the highest uh, rank and uh, as our, the, our executive. He has been instrumental in the implementation of SDGs, also bearing in mind that he heads um, the premier university in Uganda, which um, is a diverse university, multidisciplinary university that revolves around all um, the SDGs. And uh, we really thank you very much for steering the university, but also we're coming to host um, SDSN uh, Uganda National Network. And um, with that, I would uh, like um, to invite um, the principal, the principal now today, uh, Professor Goleti Nawanoga, to kindly invite the vice chancellor uh, to speak to the audience. And we also thank him for he joined quite early and listened in to almost every presentation and we are very grateful so that um, at his time he can be able to leave and other go to uh, attend other urgent uh, issues of the university and the nation. Professor Nawanoga, please invite the vice chancellor. Thank you very much, Dr. Twino. Colleagues, you must realize that we at Makere University are privileged to be led by a foresighted leader, Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, who is extremely supportive to any initiative that heightens Makere University's visibility. His presence today attests to this. Despite his very busy schedule, he chose to sit with us for the last three hours. We can't thank you more. We are eagerly waiting to hear your usual words of wisdom. I therefore take this opportunity and singular honor to invite you, Vice Chancellor Professor Nawangwe, to address the congregation. I thank you very much, Professor Nawanoga and the Revo. I want to begin by congratulating Revo and your whole team for organizing this very important conference. I want to thank Professor Jeff, Jeffrey Sachs for personally attending and addressing the conference. Uh, as I said earlier, Professor Jeffrey Sachs is one of the top economists in the world, but one who really has a heart for the underprivileged societies of the world and is very much interested in the issue of the SDGs. I want to congratulate the SDNS group at Mackay University, but also the Uganda chapter. I want to thank the Office of the Prime Minister and also the KCCA and the other partners who are working with us on the issue of the SDGs. 
Makerere, as you all know, has a new strategic plan. And really everything we are doing under that strategic plan is supposed to address practically all the SDGs. But of course, as a university, our core effort is on providing quality education and quality research, and therefore directly addressing SDG4. As Jeffrey said, as a country and as a university, we have a big task. We must find out why we have such a huge uh, exodus of children, both at primary and secondary school. I don't know if you all know that the number of children qualifying to come to university has been declining in the last three years. That is contradictory because our population is just you know, skyrocketing. And at the same time, the number of children who qualify to come to the university is decreasing. It is a huge problem for our country and as Makere University, we must take every necessary effort to address this issue. With the increasing population, we have two major issues to deal with. One is food security. How are we going to feed this fast growing population? So our colleagues in agriculture, but almost everybody anyway, has to deal with this problem. It is a problem that will affect or that can also be handled by our social scientists, our economists, practically everybody. But of course, the colleagues in agriculture are at the center of this. The second issue is what uh, Mr. Mamabala talked about, the high rate of urbanization. Uganda was a very low urbanizing country for many years, but that has changed. And the first urbanization is putting pressure on our soils. This is a big problem for all of us. That definitely will affect, uh, will affect our capacity to produce food for all these people. But apart from that, providing the necessary facilities for a good life in the cities. Otherwise, we are going to end up with huge slums with no resources, with no services. And we must all address that. Of course, I know that as a university, we have very many different fields of knowledge, which are all addressing the different SDGs. Everybody has a role to play. I would like to believe that as a university, we are going to rise to the challenge and take the leadership in ensuring that we attain these SDGs. Once again, I congratulate, I congratulate you, the SDSN chapter at Makere University for organizing this extremely important and interesting conference. And I look forward to working with you in helping our country and the rest of humanity in achieving the SDGs. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, um, Professor Banabas Nawangwe, our Vice Chancellor, for those inspiring words. And uh, thank you for being there for uh, this event, for all this time. We are really very grateful. I would now like us to move to our very last. Um, session um, which is brainstorming on the mathematic focus uh, of SDS in Uganda. We have now very limited time and I wish this can be concluded um, in the next um, 15 or so minutes because I imagine uh, participants have other engagements that they want to go through. So we had previously allocated um, five minutes to each of the speakers, but we will uh, now reduce them to three minutes so that people just uh, mention the key issues um, on these various themes. 
And uh, I would like to hand over to Hakim Seviri, who is the assistant network manager to uh, moderate this session. Hakim, please. Uh, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, depending on where you are. I would like to first appreciate the participants who have joined in today for the online launch of the SGSN Uganda Network, and also thank the different speakers right from the top university management at the different levels of the university, from the top management and university level, college level and department level. Then I would also like to appreciate the uh, keynote addresses given by different partners from Cities Alliance, SDSN Global, and also uh, our partners from uh, different state, uh, from different entities within Uganda, Africa, and the international level. Uh, from this point, uh, let us go into the brainstorming of the four uh, thematic areas that are um, emphasized by SGSN Uganda. Uh, the first uh, presentation is going to be made by Dr. Christine Orien Onen from Guru University. And this is going to focus on agriculture and food systems. As it has been highlighted that uh, we need to embark on cross-disciplinary initiatives and innovations on how to ensure that the developing planet have secure food systems. Uh, at this point, let me call on Dr. Christine Orem on him to have her uh, insights on this theme. Thank you. Good afternoon. I hope you're hearing me. Yes. Are we together? Yes. 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 Uh, thank you so much. I'm Dr. Christine from Hulu University. And uh, I'm going to spend maybe less than three minutes. I was told to talk, to brainstorm on what is done at Gulu University on agriculture, food systems, and human health uh, in line with SDGs and what uh, SDSN, Uganda Network, should do in this area. And uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, in Gulu University, all our interventions are guided by, by our visions, our vision, mission, and objectives. And I, I think most of you are, are aware of what we normally, our visions, missions, our motto, uh, is and um, emphasizing on our motto, which is uh, for community transformation. So all what we do, we gear towards having community transformed in various areas while uh, keeping on the sustainability. Uh, at Gulu University, uh, all activities in regards to agriculture and food systems uh, uh, in the Faculty of Agriculture and, and environment and uh, environment and natural resources management. And uh, we emphasize a lot on agriculture because currently, as you know, it employs over 80% of Ugandans. And uh, for the GDP, it contributes almost to 60, uh, 26%. We have six faculties, uh, six departments in the Faculty of Agriculture and Environment. And in our training, uh, we have 10 accredited programs in agriculture, which has about 500 students. And uh, we provide multidisciplinary environment to produce all round graduates to support development of sustainable agriculture and food systems. 
Our training uh, produces graduates with not only technical skills in, the, in their respective specialty, but also with entrepreneurial orientation, social and environmental uh, conscience. Uh, we, I talked about the courses in, uh, in agriculture. We have a Bachelor of Science in Agriculture, by Systems Engineering, uh, a Greek Entrepreneurship, uh, Food and Agribusiness, that is undergraduate. But we have also other uh, graduate programs, which include uh, Masters of Science in Food and Security, Food Security and Community Nutrition. nutrition agree uh, and uh, we are so much engaged or actively engaged in research to improve agricultural production and food, food systems and um, our research themes in, in agriculture include food systems and agribusiness efficiency of small uh, scale enterprises uh, food security and uh, community nutrition food safety, uh, renewable energy, among others. And uh, our outreach activities is different from others where they have research stations, but ours, our research stations or our outreach, our, our outreach activities goes to the community direct. And that is where our strength is because we send our students to go and learn from the community and also to be to 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 to, to be to, to teach the, the the community what they already know. So it is a, a two-way direction. And uh, so in these programs that we have, there are a lot of activities which we cannot now talk about now. And probably when we join the 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 the, the network, then we shall get to know more. Uh, in the last bit, we are told, uh, we were asked to identify what SDSN can do for us or to do in this area. We are saying that there should be, if possible, support to youth retention and empowerment to improve their agricultural production. It is important to note that, uh, you know, the farmers are aging as the youth run, uh, run the, the, the cities. So it is important that they get to know more or they are supported. And I was glad that in all this, the youth are, are many and they would like to be part of the, the network. Uh, therefore, another one is that we, if possible, the network can support uni our university to carry out research and innovations that can help, can help to improve agricultural productivities and food security. This is very important. And the other one is that our, our center, student-centered model should be empowered. That, that can empower farmers, if possible, should be extend, ex expanded so that uh, the farmers get to appreciate what we do in agriculture rather than having it in research stations. Uh, since we have no time, uh, from Gulu, we are saying we are committed to joining the network and thank you so much. I'm done. Your insightful presentation. Uh, you've highlighted about um, enhancing the participation of the youth in ensuring agriculture and food system sustainability across different levels, which is critical. And also you uh, mentioned about the necessity for resources to ensure that this kind of youth participation within uh, the at different activities that ensure sustainability in agriculture and food security um, occur. Then the student-centered model of learning is also critical, especially in the, in the contemporary periods where we are facing uh, a diversity of problems that require solutions that are engineering, engineered by the uh, quality of education which is being delivered to the different students. And uh, then next, uh, let's have 
uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ebu to have a presentation on improved health. Uh, I think uh, when we look at health, currently we consider a paradigm shift from uh, focusing on uh, human health and animal health independently, but uh, rather looking at one health where we have uh, humans uh, uh, being increasingly integrated into living with animals. Let's see what the expert has to say on this. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I'm called Emmanuel Ebu. I'm not the health in, the the health uh, expert, but I'm going to make a presentation on uh, natural resources. The the health expert is uh, Mr. Chintu, who is the coordinator for the for, for the university hub. So my, my presentation is uh, going to be a short one, which will show what we have so far done. We as the students of, uh, of Mbarara University with regard to natural resource preservation and uh, ecosystem health. Let me put it to, to, to the slideshow. So once again, my name is Abu Emmanuel. I'm the solutions officer who is a student at the university. Uh, and uh, with regard to natural resources, we have managed to make a contribution to goal number six and goal number 15. Goal number six, talking about water, that is water resources. You all know River Ruizi and you know whatever is happening in River Ruizi. The levels are getting lower and the river is becoming silted. But of late, uh, the issue of plastics, plastic pollution, plastic bottles is the one that has come up. So from this slide, you can see a group of students, um, one of them. We managed to partner with, uh, with Mbarara District Local Government, uh, with uh, the Ministry of Water Regional offices in Mbarara and then the factories within Mbarara like Coca-Cola and uh, Nile breweries. And uh, we wanted to see how to solve the problem of plastic bottles on River Ruizi. You can see from the background that is River Ruizi on the left and you can see the plastic bottles. Uh, so this this is the kind of partnership we, we are talking about, the students coming together with officials from national water, from local government, from Coca-Cola, from Nile breweries. And we went to the river to tackle this challenge. And this is the challenge of plastic bottles. As you can see, plastic bottles littered all over the river. Um, the intervention we did in partnership was to do collection of the plastic bottles from the river, as you can observe. Um, and the, the plastic bottles were removed and packed, as you can observe. Uh, apart from the plastics, you can see some other wastes, which are non-plastics, and they are non-biodegradable. You also happen to see medical waste that were retrieved from the river system. Uh, and this is a photo of uh, the university premises where we plan to also see that we do a cleanup. 
And so I just wanted to highlight a, a few action points uh, which we came up with in this partnership. Uh, the first action point was, of course, trying to profile the waste generators in Mbarra City, and then to carry out a survey to track the sources of the wastes and how they are handled, and also to hold stakeholder meetings. Uh, a, a cross section of stakeholders from, from government, the private sector, the CSOs, the students body uh, to see how to further manage this problem in Mbarra City. And of course, the tangible actions, which are the low hanging fruits are the collection of the plastics. And uh, also we realize that certain parts of River Ruizi, like where we got, we collected the bottles have falls and these can be tourism sites. How can we harness the potential to see that such, such is brought to a tourist site status. Uh, like many have mentioned, uh, we continue to do public awareness and education. And also, if given a chance, we, we go to the radios and the televisions uh, to spread the word about natural resource protection. Uh, this is this this was a short presentation uh, on what so far the students in Umbara are doing, and like one of the comments I made when Professor Sachs was uh, had uh, delivered his speech was the comment of having many proposals, but uh, due to maybe mega funding and or no funding, we are not able to to implement such projects. But further still, we have learned that uh, when we make partnerships, when we do partnerships with those who could be having resources, with those who could be having resources, not only in form of money, but in form of tools and in form of knowledge, we can go a long way to conserve natural resources. Yeah. Hello? Thank you so much for your presentation. Yes. I think I'm done. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I think you could also consider moving beyond focusing on uh, water, watershed restoration, but uh, look at the circular economic point of view of turning waste into resource. Uh, that, that is a possible way of engaging the private sector to support you on the initiatives you are doing. Uh, for instance, here in Kampala, we have large recycling companies that are, are tracking waste from the communities back to uh, recycling systems. And it's really uh, having some impact at community level. And next, uh, let's have a presentation on sustainable cities from the uh, Vice Chancellor of Legion University, that is Dr. Frederick Kakembo. Can I speak? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, my topic is on recycling for smart, smart cities. And I'm talking about entrepreneurial models of uh, stakeholder engagement, which we are doing at Ndeja University. I'm going to share uh, the current status of recycling at Ndeja University. And I'm talking about recycling. Uh, bio waste, municipal bio waste. Uh, first of all, we 
started by having synergies in a multidisciplinary integration of various agriculture, like a business, social, uh, social sciences, to ensure that we bring all things and talk about the general aspects of the circular economy. So after that, we developed business models and technical and business models. And we are here we are looking at production of biofuels for clean cooking and, and heating. We are also looking at uh, generation of electricity for domestic gasification and the production of fertilizers and in the cities. Uh, from that step, we went into stakeholder engagement. University had the first bio waste recycling in Uganda in 17, 16. We brought about agencies during that conference and we identified the gaps that we need to fill in order to have a very big. sustainable recycling enterprise. Then we had the things like a, uh, uh, corporate dinners with the agencies in the country where we, we talked about various strategies. Increase uh, and then the next step undertake circular economy. People know what to do when and what. we also want to stakeholder engagement. And uh, where we want the next step awareness across the country by carrying and demonstrations of what we have done so far. We want to promote community-based training programs, help the <laughs> urban youth, urban women, and other groups to train them into the recycling programs. We also want to develop a, a, a curriculum for educational institutions, right from primary up to the university levels and the colleges. And we want the network also to streamline the intersector linkages between the private and the public sector together and put this uh, initiative to a bigger level. We want again the network to help in the advocacy for policy and institutional frameworks that are going to help the cycling aspect. Uh, you have just seen it from the previous presenter, uh, the, the problem with the challenge of bottles but we want to see how such people can be helped to go to the next. Level. We also want the uh, network to think of site When we mo mobilize men and the uh, youth and the women to recycle, we want to afford them some startup financing so that they can open up enterprises. So the pictures you see there are some of the products that we have uh, produced, not only in the institutions of learning, but also on the market. In about 10 schools in Kampala, 10 schools are using briquettes for cooking entirely. They no longer use firewood. We hope that many schools in Uganda could transfer from firewood to briquettes. And in so doing, they reduce the big volumes of uh, waste which is happening in Kampala in, in many cities and that waste could be converted into useful products like uh, biofuels and the biopests. So that's what I have today. Thank you very much.
Ça va? We think uh, the pointers which you've shared on how SGS and Uganda can engage the different partners shall be considered uh, and carried on with different partners to see how we can accelerate the different activities which you can work on. Uh, finally, let's have a presentation from Mr. Timo Fechintu, who is coming from SGS and Youth. Yeah, uh, mm. sorry, uh, after Mr. Timo Fechin to come on, we shall have a final presentation from uh, Madam Catherine Murinde. Okay, thank you. I hope I'm audible enough. Yes. Okay, that's great. So um, a good afternoon to you all. Um, Chintu Timothy, I'm currently in Bar University of Science and Technology, but I'm also a volunteer with SDS and Youth. So um, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, particularly the youth branch, uh, aims to empower youth globally to create sustainable solutions. And uh, we hope to... That's a shame, but maybe we should move on if his connection is not working. Hello, Eve. Can you hear us? Yeah, I was just saying it sounds like, unfortunately, Timothy has lost his connection. Yeah, we are going to have another uh, presenter, Kathleen Mulinde, as uh, maybe he gets reconnected, then we can have him last. Okay. Um, good afternoon to you all. Catherine here, and um, I'll be sharing my screen. I'm Catherine Mulinde and I'm from Makere University, from the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences. And um, I'm also part of MUKRI that is uh, hosting this launch. And um, the thematic priorities area that I was requested to talk about is about uh, climate compatible development, which is a very passionate uh, priorities area based on the uh, the priority areas for SDSN. Uh, the fact that uh, if we look at Uganda and from the previous speakers that have really brought up the bigger picture and vulnerability of our country in the face of a changing climate, it is worth it that uh, this priority area is considered to ensure promotion of adaptation and mitigation um, options. Um, this compatible uh, development factor is housed within SDG 13 that is mainly looking at climate action. And I, I like the choice of the word compatible, meaning that uh, climate development is at the center of every economic sector and it is at the center of every discipline per se. So SDSN Uganda that is housed in Mukri uh, desires to look at three key areas in a climate compatible development. And that is looking at a low carbon development pathways, uh, capacity building, and then transformative solutions. Uh, I, I've loved the keynote speaker who has really emphasized the issues of energy in our country and growing into an oil um, economic development world, issues of carbon emissions and looking out for options of uh, reducing these emotions is very important when we are looking at climate compatible development. Uh, capacity building is at the center of universities and um, MUKRI takes it uh, as a key factor in capacity building, as I'll later be building on this. And when we talk about transformative solutions, we are looking at options that enhance livelihoods, but also ensure ecosystem-based adaptation options um, for the now and even for the future. So MUKRI 
in the perspective of climate compatible development together with Makere University and the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences have taken on a number of um, uh, activities that they desire to be achieved. And I'm happy to say some of them have already taken off um, in different areas. Uh, that is trainings and demonstrations uh, considering evidence-based research and innovations, research for development, uh, looking at stakeholder dialogues, knowledge management, communication and dissemination, and awareness building. So when we talk about evidence-based research and innovations, um, a number of activities have uh, been taken on in Makere University, looking at climate resilient agriculture systems, a research has been conducted in different aspects, especially when we talk about livestock and crop production systems. Um, MUKRI, with support from different uh, stakeholders and funding organizations, they have really supported a range of students to conduct this research um, from bachelor's level up to PhD level. Um, they have also conducted research in the economics of climate change, assessed the economics of the impact of climate change, but also the economics of adaptation and mitigation. When we talk about environment, climate and migration, uh, this is at, at the center of a number of disciplines. If you're talking about environment, uh, you can bring in conflict and issues of gender. Climate change has really uh, led to disruption of communities where people have migrated to other places because of disasters or risks that are climate related. In terms of research development, uh, Makere is looking at nature-based solutions for adaptation and mitigation. And the concerns at heart are issues of res natural resources and ecosystems restoration and rehabilitation, as we have even looked at an example of riveries. So there are issues that are desired and even Professor Elizabeth has already highlighted it in the chat room that this requires urgent response. So when we talk about natural resources, how do we rehabilitate the really damaged ecosystems? Uh, sustainable utilization, we are looking at an integration. Our speaker that talked about uh, cities resilience, an integration of the urban and the rural, rural uh, communities, uh, sustainable utilization of energy, sustainable utilization of water resources, issues of quality and quantity come in there. Our research for development, we are looking at rainwater harvesting and irrigation systems particularly now to downscale them to the small scale um, communities. <coughs> uh, Mukri under Makere University has also gone ahead to consider management systems of climate change under knowledge management, communication and dissemination. And this has been well supported by uh, FAO, um, integration of management systems and integration of uh, information science together with the universities as knowledge brokers in climate resilience, and especially looking at climate policy and the climate guidelines. Awareness is a key factor when we are talking about climate compatible development. And this is where the youth, as many have been highlighting, are considered youth engagements, diplomacy engagements, bridging the gap between the old and the young and also integrating knowledge from the youth to the young from the young people and upscaling it to the older generation in understanding climate issues when i get back to trainings and demonstration within the college of agriculture and environmental sciences there has been a lot of effort in designing curricula across uh, the different levels and programs uh, within the School of Forestry and Environmental Sciences. It has taken on the lead to cross-cut climate change science across different programs. 
such that as students get a foundation when they get out there, they have the knowledge of climate and a way of taking a climate action ahead. But also MUKRI has supported through short courses, uh, climate change and agriculture development courses across uh, different levels, stakeholder, local government, uh, for them to understand what climate change issues means at their workplaces. I'll conclude with the stakeholder dialogues. Uh, MUKRI has been honored to uh, participate with different uh, organizations. I've listed some of them, but the list doesn't end there. Act Together, International Organization for Migration, Worldwide University Network, uh, USID, FAO, and from the national to the local. But in all of these engagements, being uh, really housed in a university, the young people at the heart of uh, making sure that information goes out there. So I second the efforts and the desire for young people and for the youth for further engagement in climate issues, especially in achieving SDG 13, climate action, and the benefits of uh, climate compatible uh, development has wins beyond what we call the win-win analogy, but they go beyond to enhancing resilience. They go beyond uh, in reducing emissions and also improving development. So when we look to this, the desired outcome is an improvement in sustainable agricultural systems, uh, reducing food insecurity. We are looking at water security, energy security, improvement of health, as earlier speakers have really highlighted. And what is desired is the well being and improvement in the livelihood of every Ugandan. So I encourage that through the SDSN, networks and youth engagements should be enhanced through Makere University, through the networks of other universities and those that are planning to join the network, I suggest that we do it much faster because the changes in climate are not waiting for anyone. They will take on and continue to, continue to, to take on. So stakeholders on this platform and beyond, I encourage you to join uh, partners, friends, civil society, uh, families, communities but also communication and dissemination of climate change knowledge and science to the formal and the informal sector. We need to translate climate change to a language that is acceptable and understood by different levels in our country. So the science currently and the understanding of climate change is within the scientific world and mainly the formal sector and the informal sector, all they understand are the basics, but they do not know yet the future. They cannot conceptualize very well what the future is like. So I challenge SDSN for us to take on approaches of communicating, disseminating, and downscaling all this understanding and knowledge to the language that can be understood by every Ugandan everywhere. For that, I thank you very much. Wonderful presentation about climate compatible development and how we can uh, scale down the information and translation of scientific language into what can uh, be understood by the common person. Uh, I think uh, Timothy is back. Timothy, are you there? Yes, yes, I am. Yeah, yes. proceed. Proceed with your presentation. Thank you very much. I'm very sorry I was uh, interrupted by a reboot. But I was still talking about the Sustainable Development Solution Network, the youth branch, and how we seek to empower youth globally to create sustainable solutions. How we think of doing this is by creating, by educating. You know, when the youth know about the SDGs, when they are aware, then they can take action. 
but they cannot take action alone. And that leads us to our next step, which is collaboration. Collaboration between communities, between civil society organizations and university associations, between the government and universities. And through this, we hope to support innovation and tackle key domain areas such as schools and university campuses. I'll mention why universities are very important. Now, SDSN Youth has two initiatives it has come up with to put young people at the forefront of achieving the SDGs. Uh, one of them is a global schools program, which hopes to integrate the SDGs into a school setting. Ideally, this would be primary and secondary school settings in Uganda, but it hasn't been strongly implemented. But on the other hand, the wing under which I lie is the SDG students program. This consists of SDG student hubs that are both semi-physical and semi-virtual, and they have been put up in institutions of higher learning. Now, these hubs aim to educate university students about the sustainable development growth and train them into supporters who hopefully will carry uh, this issue of sustainability into their future work, even after they graduate. Currently, I'm the coordinator of the SDG Students Hub at Murray University of Science and Technology, and I am working with a colleague at uh, Macquarie University. And uh, both these hubs were set up at the same time, that was last year in October 2020, there was a call put out, and we applied. So we have set up hubs, I'm not sure how big the Macquarie hub is as of now, but the hub at Murray um, University of Science and Technology currently consists of uh, 20 members that are very vigorous and a leadership team of six members. Now we've been in direct communication with uh, the global team at the Sustainable Solutions Network headquarters in New York. And uh, when I heard that SDSN is finally coming to Uganda, finally launching in Uganda, I was very happy because this means that now we can work hand in hand with people that directly understand the problem that's on ground. Um, what we've been doing in the six months uh, that we've been set up, you know, earlier we, we had trainings to get ourselves acquainted with the SDGs. But right now we are the ones looking for opportunities in which we can engage university students in how to do, um, how to carry out projects, how to think in the line of sustainability. Um, we've had two sessions. Uh, the first one was virtual, it was in December, 2020. Uh, we did it in collaboration with uh, the student hub at Macquarie University. Unfortunately, the turn up was a bit low because you'll find that most of the youth have, have excuses here and there, some to do with data and they ask you they have data refund. And uh, but unfortunately you do not because we are also volunteers. So last month um, here at the university, we decided to redo it physically. And uh, this time round we invite, we had about 90 participants that we can say now have an in-depth understanding of the SDGs. Now, this is the point of the hubs. The hubs use the existing university structures to get in touch with the university students. <coughs> because you'll find that in most cases, at least a student belongs to one association or another. And for us to set up independently, we saw it was going to be a bit of a challenge so what we are doing, we are collaborating with different associations that exist to see how we can use their mandate as associations and then point it in the direction of sustainability and enable all students to have an in-depth understanding. But understanding and knowing about the SDGs is one thing and taking action is another. And this is why I feel that us as the hubs will hit a roadblock. Previously, we've not had enough support in this area. So SDSN launching in Uganda means that we have a new opportunity to network. I understand SDSN Uganda may know people that I personally don't know that are willing to train and, for, and uh, get and possibly mentor students that are interested in the same areas of focus under the SDGs. We understand like personally, because of my course, I am interested in SDG number three, which has to do with good health. <coughs> That may not be the same as that of an engineer who may have possibly something about sustainable cities like previous speakers have spoken about. Now, one of uh, the hub members actually presented previously, Emmanuel, and we've been looking into climate change and making the earth a safer place to live. And that, that's why we discovered this problem with River Rizzi. And we've had proposals coming in from different students interested in different things. 
And we are hoping that engaging these students and uh, possibly supporting their proposals to the point of implementation will enable them, will also motivate them to talk to other students to get into this ride that is the SDG. Now, Timothy. Okay. Uh, we are running out of time. We should be concluding the presentation. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was actually about to conclude actually with a quote by Albert Einstein that said, we cannot solve problems with the same thinking that we used to create them. Now, most of the problems we have that inspired the development of the sustainable development goals have been accumulating over time. And you find that the youth were not in play when these problems were created. So it is very important that we tap into this role that the youth can play towards finding very innovative solutions towards the SDGs. So we are very interested as youth. I saw that we are going to have SDS in Youth Uganda. The youth are very interested in playing a role in, in working towards the SDGs. And I ask that we keep in touch and we are involved in the decision-making and implementation processes. Thank you very much. Timothy, for your presentation. Uh, we are glad that you had uh, begun some initiatives on how to engage the youth in implementing the different sustainable development goals, targets, and other activities. And the SDSN Uganda offer an opportunity for the SDSN youth to collectively uh, bargain and claim for their inclusivity in whatever is happening. I believe uh, it's going to uh, collectively bring together all the different hubs within the different entities to come up with innovative ideas to see that uh, we have one voice and one goal for all the uh, SDG fraternity. Thank you. I hand it over to Dr. Repo to provide conclusive remarks and we see how we can take on our platform to the next level. Um, thank you all um, the speakers and um, for all of you participants for being resilient up to this late time. We are going to finalize our um, our session with a poll on SDGs. If you go to the chat box, you will see a link for you to participate um, in the poll. Uh, it's uh, just last like uh, one to two minutes. Um, maybe if I could uh, um, share uh, the screen. So you will find if you'll find this um, link in your chat box. You just click and then you participate uh, in the poll and that will be our um, last item on the agenda. But I don't know uh, our senior manager who manages uh, the Africa region if, if you have any few messages that you want to tell the participants. Uh, I think Eve has already left. So we will participate um, in this poll and then uh, we'll be closing. Um, uh, but um, I think Professor Sabit is still on. Is Professor Sabit still on? Uh, yes, could you uh, just uh, talk to the participants um, to this launch event? As I said in the very beginning, uh, I took over from uh, Professor Sabiti, who started this initiative, and um, it would be quite good to listen to the old man um, with that uh, old wisdom uh, who started this initiative here. Sabiti, please... Uh, just a few words to the participants, and then you will uh, close officially this meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rivo. I am really very, very happy that uh, what I started as an old man, as you said, 
I handed it over to you as a young man, and I'm very, very happy that uh, you have achieved what I had uh, wanted to achieve. So I have done very good successional planning and uh, the, the SDSN uh, Uganda is now operational and it is operational at such a high level to have linked with the office of the prime minister, to have linked with the top most uh, person in economics, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, and uh, continued working with Eva, this is very good. Uh, and the participants who have attended, I'm very happy that uh, really you have a lot of enthusiasm. You are young and uh, with very good uh, ideas, we need to work together to make sure that uh, all these SDGs in Uganda are well implemented for the good of our country. So <clears throat> what has been discussed is really good. What we need to do is to fine tune what to pick up those priority areas that uh, SDNS Uganda will now coordinate with all those participants, increase the number of membership uh, institutions so that uh, this huge, huge challenge of sustainable, of developing sustainable roaming solution networks uh, does an effective work in Uganda. We want a green Uganda, we want a green economy so that we have these sustainable uh, projects that will help us continue working. So I'm really happy. Congratulations to everybody. We appreciate the Vice Chancellor, Professor Nawangwe. I started with him, he was the one who gave the go ahead. And uh, Professor Nawanoga was the first principal. I mean, he was the delegated by the principal to chair the first meeting that we held with Eve. Uh, here in our College of Agricultural Sciences. So all along, the program or the network has been well supported. So I, I thank you. Members, thank you very much for all your efforts and the time you have spent uh, in uh, attending and participating very well in this uh, launch. Thank you. Sabiti, so, for those. Professor Sabiti, thank you for those nice words and for starting all this uh, that uh, planting the tree that uh, is now having bearing the, the, the branches uh, that have even the fruits. Uh, so we are approaching the closure of uh, this session. As I mentioned, please uh, go to the uh, chat box and participate in the poll. And then we'll be, uh, unless, Hakim, do you have any other issue to announce? We don't want any other, in another presentation, just announcements, and then we close and uh, leave our resilient participants to um, go to other activities. Maybe for those who left prematurely, we shall send yeah. an email and they follow it up. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Please um, go to the chat box and uh, follow the link and then do the poll. We're happy to be with you. And uh, Prof, you have something else? Yes. I was asked to put my face into the <laughs> computer. Yeah, we can see you. So we that see people you. may know me. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. The, Thank you. the old man. Photo. Yeah. <laughs> the photo congratulations, everyone. Yeah, congratulations, everybody. Thank you for attending uh, this meeting. Um, I wish to now close. Revo, uh, a group. Revo, a group photo. With the, with the online participants. 
Yes, the, the technical team can guide there. There is a way you turn on the videos and do something online. And thereafter, the rest of us will also go at the entrance. But uh, is Juma there or Albert? We could turn on videos. There is a way it's done. I will leave the matter of generals to the generals. Albert or Juma? Albert is here. Juma has left. So you can take the picture of that. And go to the next. I see, didn't do your online press. Very good. The pictures are taken, so the technical team which is here, we meet at the entrance and take a group photo and then we call it a day. Thank you very much.